Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today I'm going to show you how you can create a D365 project in Visual Studio. Um, this is a project used for creating code for Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. This is the first step of anything you do um, to add new items or code. And rather than giving these same steps over and over again in some of the other videos, I thought I'd go through the steps here and that way I can more quickly uh, skip those steps um, when I'm showing you something else. Okay, so the first step is to um, open Visual Studio. You always need to open Visual Studio running as administrator. Um, so you can right click on um, the Visual Studio icon, um, right click here and say run as administrator. Or if you're doing it from the start menu, you can type Visual Studio, right click and say run as administrator. That's required um, for a lot of the work that you do for um, this development. Next, once you have Visual Studio open, you can verify that it says admin here um, or in the top um, bar if you're using a previous version of Visual Studio. Then you can go to File, New, Project. When you do that, you're going to get a dialog form that looks like this if you're using Visual Studio 2019. If you're using Visual Studio 2017, your dialog form will look a little different, um, but you should still be able to understand it. Next, you need to select the Finance and Operations project type. If you've already created a project in this environment, you'll be able to see it under your recent project templates. If this is the first time you're creating a project, you just need to search for it in this top bar. You can type finance or finance and operations, and then you should see it in this grid here. If you're not seeing it in this grid, you may not be working in a cloud hosted development environment that already has these tools installed, and you may need to install these specific project tools in your Visual Studio solution. Once you see it in this list, you can select it and select next. Then you're going to get the second dialog that's going to ask you for your project name. So we can name it, you know, my project name two, because I've already created one over here. And then you can validate that these properties are correct. Usually I just leave this to the default, but if you have a specific location where you want to store your project, you can set it there. Um, and so usually these default settings are fine. And then you create, click the Create button. This will go ahead and create a new project for you. The next thing we want to look at is some key properties on this project that you always need to look at. Otherwise, you're going to run into trouble um, if you start coding away before you set these properties. So go ahead and right click on the project itself, not the solution, but the project, and then go down and select properties. This is going to bring up this properties dialog form. And again, there's a couple properties we really need to look at. So we're going to talk about them today. One is this model property. When you are coding new things in the system, you want to set this to your model. I've got another video, an article about how to create a model. And so I recommend you watch that video um, if you're not familiar with a model or you don't have one created. Once you have one created, you just want to select it from the drop down and make sure that this is set to your model. The other property we want to look at is this synchronized database on build property. This is important. What this does is when you set this to true, it means that anytime um, you compile or build your project, it's going to also see if you have any changes that affect the underlying SQL database um, and make sure that that SQL database gets updated as well. So for instance, if you create a new table in this application explorer, you would want that new table to be created in the database as well. And if you don't have this property set to true, that table won't get created. Or maybe you're creating a data entity, or maybe you're modifying a field or creating a field on an existing table, or maybe you're just changing the length of a field um, on an existing table. All of those situations, you need to synchronize 
um, the database after or during the build. Um, and setting this to true just makes that happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to true and click okay. There are a few cases where maybe a developer would purposely decide to leave that set to false. Um, it does make the builds take a little longer and so they may wanna set that to false, uh, code away, make lots of code changes, make sure their code's great, and then set that to true and do another build or simply go up to extensions, Dynamics 365, synchronize database um, after they've made all their changes. So it's kind of your choice. I like to set that to true when I know I'm gonna make some changes that affect the database. Okay, so now we've got our project. Real briefly, I wanna show you how you kind of get started in creating new objects. You can right click on the project, um, select add new item, and when you do that, um, you'll get a dialog form like this. You want to select the Dynamics 365 items. Again, if you don't see this, you're probably missing um, some component of your Visual Studio installation. But if you're using a cloud-hosted development environment, this comes pre-installed. You can then pick which type of object you'd like to add, give it a name, and then click Add, and then that item will get added um, to your project. I'll go ahead and click cancel here. The other two things um, we can look at is how to add an existing item. Let's say we're looking at um, cuss table and we know we need to customize the cuss table. I want to be able to add um, this existing item to my project. I actually can't do that directly, but I can right click and say create extension. And when I do that, a new extension object will be added to my project. And I can open that extension object and add additional fields to the cuss table that way. Lastly, if I have an existing object, so I've got one called RSM vehicle that's part of this model, um, I can add it to my project directly. I can see that it's part of my model by looking at the name in between these square brackets. It's Dynamics 365 Musings and that matches the name of my model that I can see over here to the right of my model name. When that object exists in this model I can simply right click and say add to project and the very same object is added to my project. I can double click on it to open it in the designer. I can look at its code um, by right clicking and saying view code, or I can right click and select properties and see the properties for this object and edit them. Often you need to select the node from the designer first and then um, you'll be able to edit the properties. Okay, that's it for creating a project. Uh, pretty basic, but very, very important. This is the basic basis of creating any code within the system. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.